take a closer look at these rocket chilies. They've produced a large number of side shoots. Some people top their chilies to, to get this effect. Um, I'm not someone who practices topping of chilies. The two varieties that I particularly focus on, I find already produce side shoots, um, namely the Prairie Fire. But I'm blown away by the number of side shoots that are coming off this um, rocket variety, which I'm growing for the first time this year. So I'm quite excited about how this will turn out. And my Anaheims are looking really, really healthy. Nice, strong plants. And the jalapenos are also doing well. There's some slight yellowing on the jalapeno leaves. Not sure what that is. There's no sign of aphid damage. Might just be the cool weather we've had and the plants have not coped as well but they're doing well now and in this pot I have a habanero plant which again like all my chilies I've grown from seed with this being one of the hotter varieties it's taken a little bit of time to kick on but now it's showing signs of good movement and growth the leaves are really, really vibrant. Let's take a look at the bottle gourd that I've planted in the usual spot in the Lean To Greenhouse. This year I'm trying and seeing how two plants growing side by side will do in the same big pot. I must say last year's crop wasn't the most prolific so I'm hoping that might get a bit more of a crop produced as a combined effort. We'll see how we get on. I know some of the fellow gardeners of Bangladeshi Bottle Gourd, particularly from Birmingham and further south, um, will probably have their own bottle gourds in a much more advanced stage. And besides being envious of you, it's just the fact that we've had a cool spring and we are further north than yourself up here in the northwest of England. And we're usually a couple of weeks behind. The outdoor salad bed is thriving also. The broad beans that I'd planted alongside the leaf salads have shown good growth as well in the last fortnight and it won't be too long before we start picking some of these leaves And I actually like the look of this frame. It's a rustic look. I will say that when I first tried this technique, I was, wasn't was sure that the beans would vine their way around, but they seem to do that, no problem. And encourage that one up here. So that's Bellotti beans. Maybe next time I do an update, there might be some flowers on it. So this um, square bed has got a large 
courgette plant. I just put that in uh, uh, about a week ago. And just at the back, just placed into the ground a couple of trailing marrows. Now this was the area which I planted the um, trailing marrow last year. Yeah, but this time I've put um, a bit more fertiliser into the ground, organic fertiliser. Fish blood and bone, but I've just incorporated it a bit more and I've given it a bit more space. And the idea behind planting the trailing marrow at the back is that by the time the courgettes are done, and usually um, I find that before the summer's up, my courgettes tend to get powdery mildew anyway, so I'll probably take that out, and that way the trailing marrows will have room to spread. So hopefully this is a, an improved area for growing um, courgettes and marrows. The dwarf yellow wax beans that I've uh, been growing here in the last couple of years um, are doing all right. There's some evidence of slug damage. But with the weather set to improve, hopefully the plants will become a bit more vigorous in their growth. The healthier plants tend not to get as much uh, damage to them. So I believe. And I have resorted to the odd slug pellet here and there. And just at the back I've sown some peas. And hopefully when they germinate they shall make their way up this little trellis or frame that I've put in place. can just see some evidence of flower setting so again maybe next time I do an update around a fortnight's time we might have some uh, tiny little pods that have developed on this and it's an outdoor bed of yellow dwarf beans the onions are doing quite well, there's a lot of growth on the tops and I'm hoping that following that we'll be um, thickening up and some bulbing going on but there's not a lot of evidence of that at the moment. These are the red onions that we planted and we planted them as onion sets. In fact, some of the radishes that were there at the time when I planted it, I put some radish seeds in. We've harvested those. As I'd mentioned in the last update, the milder temperatures that we were hoping for have actually helped kick on the growth of the amaranth. This is the stem amaranth. And we've actually pricked a few of these out and put them in their own individual pots. So it's actually worked out as a nursery bed And this particular one is um, a bit different from the rest. It might actually be what we call lalhag. But either way, it's all edible and it's part of the amaranth family anyway.
and here are some more pots of individual amaranth plants these were pricked out a short while ago and they're doing quite well looking forward to getting some amaranth this year you'll have noticed that I try and grow quite a few subtropical plants namely of Bangladeshi heritage um, and it's with gardening that you really should grow what you want to eat now then in a previous update video I said that I was going to try growing Bangladeshi bottle gourd outside but in a modified cold frame and this is the large raised bed type structure that I've got and all it's got is two large sort of perspex sheets which I cover and I'm going to leave it covered until we get to July but in here is the bottle gourd and I've actually seen this plant grown in Bangladesh both as a trailing plant which is the most common way of doing that um, but people have also just let it roam and um, what I'm trying to do is take inspiration from that and let the plant grow but at a low height and I'll put a um, horizontal frame inside this box I've started to put some pieces of timber in but I haven't secured anything yet so as I say I'm hoping to win the battle against nature and see if I can grow Bangladeshi bottle gourd here in the northwest of England with reasonable success. I still have some reasonably good bamboo canes which I've put to use and this is for my runner bean patch it's always nice to see the bean plants curling their way up bean poles we've had some wind damage here I think this might be butternut squash I'm not one for putting in labels once the plants produce the fruit or the vegetable in this case I usually know what I've grown so there's an anticipation to it last year I um, didn't get round to covering up my blueberry plant and the birds got it and this year I haven't really covered it up what I've done is I've cheated I've brought it into the polytunnel but hopefully there'll be a, a few more blueberries for my children to get a hold of they're really healthy fruit to eat um, black currants are especially brilliant but blueberries are not that far behind some people call them a super food I think all food's super 
I like the taste of some more than others, but generally, homegrown food is super. And the pears are developing nicely. I won't be um, taking any of these off. I wait for a June drop and see what nature does. And I usually find that nature's already thinned out quite a bit of the fruit anyway. But well, this is um, a conference variety of pear. And it is so sweet. I thought before I go home, I'll have a wander over and see what Ray's getting up to. He's um, brought us over to his uh, broad bean patch. Now, this was a, a, a clip that we featured a couple of episodes ago on how to grow broad beans. Is it Carmazan, the variety you've got over here, Ray? There's nearest ones, yeah. And then at the other side, it's Aquadulce. That's yeah? Right. I tell you what, you've got some prolific flowering going on, haven't you? Yep. We're both planting in spring. But, um, there's not a, still a few bees about now, even though it's getting late on. Yeah, I'll just back. zoom in on that. It's mostly bumblebees that pollinate these. Yeah. I thought I saw a bumblebee there anyway. There we go. Yeah, but there's more... There's more flowers on one variety than the, than the other. What about securing it once the plants get a bit taller and, and protecting it from wind damage? We should have it on now, but it's getting around to doing it, doing loads of other things as well. And, and what we're talking about, uh, tying some string around it and some yeah, put poles. Some, put some sticks in and just stop the wind blowing them over, snapping them off. Yeah. And snapping them off, you don't get anything on it then. I've got to mention this, Ray. Your red currants... They're massive. Just starting to turn. Just got a little bit of colour in them now. The size of the blueberries that I'm hoping I'm going to get. <laughs> Honestly. What's your special fertiliser you're putting in, in there? No. Nothing special. You had black currants in there a while ago and they died and gave them up. And that bit down there, is it just the weight of it that's pulled it all down? It could be, yeah. And he's fastening up that. But you need covering up before they're starting to ripen anymore. The birds will have them. 